Hello guys, welcome back to the 12th part of the Kotlin UB2 Pro series. In the last part you learned about arrays, which are basically containers for a type of objects. So here we created an array for strings. And inside of that container we put three strings in. So hello guys and what's up. And after that we can print one of those strings by addressing the array with its index. So in that case, uh, we want to print the element at index zero, which is the first one. Arrays start to count at zero. So that element has index zero, that one index one, and that one index two. And in this video, you will learn about while loops, which are used to execute certain pieces of code several times in a row. So to start, I will remove the code of the last video and as you know from if conditions, if we write if here, then we have to put a condition inside of the parentheses. So if we just make val here, val x is equal to 3 for example, and then write if x is greater than 2, then that means that this code will be executed if that condition is true. But this code will only be executed once. So now I will show you a way how we can we can execute that code several times in a row. So I remove that and write instead while x is greater than 2, again curly brackets after that, and that means now that as long as x is greater than 2, the code between those curly brackets will be executed and only if this condition is false the program will continue with the lines afterwards. So we somehow need to put some logic here that this condition will be false sometimes because otherwise we will have an infinite loop. So if we write print line hello for example in here and run the program, you see that the console is going crazy because first it will check if that condition x is greater than 2 is true, which it is because x is equal to 3 and 3 is greater than 2. So because it is true, we execute that piece of code and print the line hello. After that, we check again if x is greater than 2, which is true because we didn't change x inside of the loop, so we print again hello. Then we check again if x is greater than 2, which it is, so hello is printed again. So if we just write print line after the while loop, for example, what's up, and run the program, you see it still prints hello all the time and it prints never what's up because it will only jump out of this while loop if that condition is false sometimes and it is never false, so it will never print that line. So what we actually have to do is we have to change the value of x inside of that while loop. So for example we decrease it by 1, that minus minus just means that the value of x will be decreased by 1. And currently it's red because I made it a val, we cannot reassign it, so I have to make it a var here. And let's run the program now. You see now it prints hello, what's up? It just prints hello one time because it checks if x is greater than 2, which it is, x is 3, then it prints hello, then it decreases x by 1, so at that time x is 2, then it checks again if x is greater than 2, but since x is 2 now, this will return false because 2 is not greater than 2, so it will jump out of that loop and continue with that line. Currently this is nothing more than an if statement because the print line here is just executed one time, but let's say that we change the condition that x is greater than 0, so this will be executed as long as x is greater than 0. If we execute this, you see it now prints hello three times and then what's up, because it first checks if x is greater than 0, which it is. In the first round it will decrease it by 1, then x is 2, 
so 2 is still greater than 0, it will execute this again, decrease it by 1, x is 1 now, x uh, um, 1 is still greater than 0, so it executes it a third time, and then it decreases x to 0, and at that point x is not greater than 0, so it will jump out of that loop and execute this line. In the last video about arrays, I told you that you will learn how to print a whole array in the next videos. And actually, now with the knowledge about while loops, we are able to do that. So for that, I will remove all of that. And now, just as I did in the last video, I will create an array here, which I call my array, and set that to array of hello guys what's up and create another variable which I will call array length and set that to my array dot size so what size will return is how many elements we have in our array so in this time it will return three so array length will be three here and after that I will create a var which I call i and set it to zero. i is basically the naming convention for counter variables. So we want to count that variable up in the while loop now. So I write while i is less than array length, we want to count i up by one. And in every iteration, we want to print our array, my array, at the index of i. So if we write my array square brackets i here and I run that program, you see now it prints the whole array as we wanted. So why does that work? So first of all we define an array in which we put three strings in here, hello guys and what's up. So this string is at index 0, this is at index 1, and this is at index 2. After that we save the length of that array in the variable array length, so the length will be 3 because we have three elements in it. And finally we declare the variable i and set that to 0. So now we can check in the while loop. So in the first iteration we check if i is less than array length. So 0 is less than 3 so it will execute that piece of code. And the print line function basically accesses our array at the index i now. So since i starts at 0 it will first print the array at index 0 so it will print hello. After that we increase i by 1 so now we check if 1 is actually less than array length, if 1 is less than 3. So that is true. So we can print my array at index 1 now. So we print guys. Then we increase i again and check again if 2 is less than 3, which it is. So we print the array at index 2, which is what's up. Then we increase it again, so now i is 3 and it is not less than array length anymore, so the program will jump out of that loop and finish. So for this video I will give you two homeworks again, an easier and a harder version. I will show you the easier version right now, so I want you to write a program where you can enter a number here, let's say 10, and then the program will count from 10 down to 0. So basically just a program that lets the user enter a number in the console and then you count down from that number to 0. So for that functionality you will need the readLine function again. Don't forget to convert the result of that to an integer and check if the number is not equal to null before you access it in the while loop, otherwise that won't work. For the harder version of the homework you should let the user enter two numbers and then calculate the first number to the power of the second one. So for example if we write 3 as number 1 
then it asks me to enter number two. I enter three again, for example, press enter, and then it prints three to the power of three is 27. So three times three times three is 27. And if I run the program again and enter, for example, two and five, then the result of two to the power of five will be 32. If you never messed around with loops before, then this harder version will be probably not be easy for you. So if you can solve this, then don't worry. If you practice loops on a continuous basis, then this won't be a problem for you in the future. If you found a solution, then don't mind posting it in the comments and I can comment on that solution and tell you what you can improve or if that is a fine solution. And yeah, that's basically it for this video. As there was no homework in the last video, I can show you a solution right now. So have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.